Well, thank you those who were here for the AGM. Um, and I welcome those who've now joined us after the AGM. Uh, and this is for the, um, the treat of the evening uh, and the real purpose, which is for our director, uh, Dr. Lut van der Put, uh, to present 70 years of the British Institute of Ankara and beyond. Uh, so with great pleasure, I uh, welcome Lut uh, to give her lecture this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim, and uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, so, indeed, the BIA marked its 75th anniversary throughout the year 2023. And, of course, it is what is today, thanks to developments and decisions that were taking, uh, taken over the years. I would like to try to get to, today to give an overview, looking back and also especially looking forwards. It was supposed to be a celebratory year, but devastating earthquakes and floods in Turkey prevented real celebrations. We, were, we are really glad that with the help of the Cultural Protection Fund and also the contingency funding of the British Academy, we were able to grant eight emergency research fellowship to academics from the region hit by the earthquakes. So it was not exactly the best start of the year. But nevertheless, of course, we celebrate our 75th anniversary, but it was also the 100th anniversary of the Republic of Turkey, which was celebrated on the 29th of October, so towards the end of the year. Um, and it must be said that especially the population of Turkey celebrated, because there were a million people who visited Anutkabir. Uh, in Istanbul, as you can see, there were big displays, but what was especially interesting uh, and heartwarming to see was the lots and lots of people on both sides of the Bosphorus. So people really took it on board. Um, Apart from the 75th anniversary celebrations of the BIA, about which I will talk in detail later, the normal life at the BIA, of course, continued as well. I also have a bit more time today than I normally do, so I would like to make this presentation as much about the people of the BIA and behind the BIA as about the realizations of the Institute itself. And everything the BIA does is supported by the London and Ankara managers and their assistants, Gürgen Gürdivan and Bashak Bodur in East Ankara and Laura Patterson and Catherine Hughes here in London. And whether it be grant applications, committee and council business meetings, daily running of the institute, budgets, accounts, and this year especially dealing with an incredible inflation in Turkey, according to the government, 60%, according to independent sources, over 120. And from us doing shopping in Turkey, it looks more like the independent ones are correct, unfortunately. So we are really grateful to our managers. Um, I, as it was mentioned before already, unfortunately, uh, Gugun, who has been our rock for more than 40 years, is retiring in June. So um, I don't know yet what we are going to do after June, but we'll hopefully sort it out till then. They, and all of us at the Institute, can in turn uh, are in turn supported by the BIA officers. And I must stress that all of them are honorary officers, uh, whereas the workload is often, part, uh, often that of a part-time job. And as one of them recently told me, I don't know how people who don't are not retired could do this job. And I'm afraid that that person was very right, unfortunately. So we do ask a lot of them. We do um, rely on them a lot. They are especially in constant contact with uh, uh, BA London office, where the budgeting, quarterly financial reports, and also the BIA committees and council meeting are taking place. The Council of Management is chaired by Jim Crow. And the Council of Management is of, are, of course, the trustees of the Institute, the, the, the decision-making organ, 
and several committees are working towards uh, supporting them, but it's the council that takes the decision. And today, of course, we have several new council members election, uh, elected. Uh, Kamran Hashemi uh, is the honorary, uh, so our honorary treasurer, is also the chair of the finance and personnel committee. And a name that I would like to, and I'm going to try to see whether I can make this work. Yeah, uh, no. Uh, Anyway, Nicholas Milner has been on the Finance and Personnel uh, Committee for quite a while, luckily for us, because he is one of two pro dono, uh, pro dono um, fin um, legal advisors together with William Saunders. So we are also very grateful to them. In turn, the officers, uh, sorry, Warren Eastwood, our honorary secretary, and today, as of today, uh, Mark Jackson, Honorary Secretary, they are involved in everything that has to do with research and policy making. So all officers, as well as directors and all the others at the Institute, can in turn, in, uh, can turn to the President and Vice Presidents. Uh, today, newly elected Stephen Mitchell, and as it was already mentioned, unfortunately, we lost as Martin, Martin, uh, Matthew Farrell and, Sim and Sir Timothy Daunt, both uh, um, vice president, and also Patricia Daunt, the wife of Timothy this year. So it was a sad year for the BIA. All three gentlemen are involved in the BIA Development Committee which is once again chaired by Jim Crow, and it's that committee that is um, focusing on fundraising activities of the BIA. Always invited are the BIA senior development Mar uh, manager, Martin Weitz, and also, normally, the development and co uh, communication assistant, Nora Stroh, who is also here, there at the back, who recently joined the BIA and is following in the footsteps of Charlotte Jordan, who decided to focus on EES, but he's also here today. So, and they are very much, whereas Martin is mostly working on grant applications, the ladies uh, were, are very big on social media. So when you hear from us, it's highly likely that Nora and previously Charlotte are behind it. As every year, the BIA funded research grants from, um, to, from applications from academics linked to UK higher education institution in Turkey and the Black Sea re region because the BIA is still and will hopefully always remain an academic research institute. I can report, uh, so we, they are granted by the um, BIA Research Committee, which is chaired by Scott Redford. And as you can see, several of the officers are in the committee. And I can report on a range of projects dealing with a wide range of topics. Uh, the ones that you see here are archaeology and prehistory, and you may think that's all prehistory. Um, but actually, there are quite a few uh, important differences because the first application and the first grant that we gave is actually for um, archaeobotanical research, so which is looking at the uh, environmental archaeology. The other, uh, then we have two in the Konya Plain, and the third one from Jan, uh, from uh, Jana Ayala is uh, the beginning of the BIA's involvement in Tash de Peller, which is the big new wish prestige uh, project of Turkey, looking at the Neolithic in the southeast, in Urfa and region. So it's um, important that the BIA is also involved in that area and in that region. So, and what um, the BIA, this BIA team is going to do there is a geoarchaeological survey, which will be important to put the Neolithic um, cultures in a larger framework. The BIA also funded several projects from different periods, and the first one is not in Turkey, but in Georgia. Um, you may think, why all the colors? The reason for that is that the two in red were granted, but because of the earthquakes, no new forum projects were granted permission because um, everybody always, as, you, as most of you know, has a Turkish uh, representative, and they were all involved in work related to 
the earthquake. So there were not enough representatives, so no, no new Turkish um, foreign uh, projects were granted. That, however, freed up money for a cultural heritage management uh, project um, combining heritage education with STEM uh, education in Turkish schools. We also funded several uh, contemporary Turkey-related projects, in addition, of course, to um, also the postdoctoral fellowships about which I will talk later. Now, we do not only work with UK higher education institutions, the BIA is also funding a variety of grants from non-BA funding, because the BA funding is reserved for postdoctoral. Um, the first one, are scholarships that allow academics from Turkey and the Black Sea to come to the UK or to the BIA in Ankara to work. And for the 75th anniversary, we really increased the normal budget, which allowed us to give to grant five scholarships of each um, of up to 2,000 pounds to people from Turkey and the Black Sea region. We also, and I think we are rather proud of this, uh, have a suite of uh, scholarships available for postgraduate students because uh, the BIA thinks it's very important that also postgraduates have the chance to go to Turkey because those people have not yet decided on which area they are going to work and continue their career. And giving them the chance to travel in Turkey may uh, result in further activities in Turkey. So. Um, equally non-BIA funded and new is the BIA Master's Dissertation Prize. So it was uh, developed to uh, promote, recognize and encourage excellent research by students engaged in the study of Turkey and the Black Sea. And the first one is uh, uh, Kathy Graham is uh, worked on uh, plaster as a vital material and she is from the University of Wales, Trinity St. David. So this year as well, I can already say that we have quite a few applications for the 2023 um, Master's Dissertation Prize. The BIA also, like, uh, also offers the possibility of publishing research, and that is the BIA Publication Committee. And as we heard today uh, in our training, um, like several of the officers, there is um, being a trustee and then there is being a volunteer. And in the BIA publication committee, there is a lot of volunteering going on. Cathy Dracott is the new chair of the BIA uh, publication committee, but she is also the editor of the BIA monographs series. And then, in, apart from the BIA monograph series, we have two other uh, series that are in collaboration with IB Taurus, Taurus that is Bloomsbury. And uh, to highlight and to increase the visibility of the BIA in contemporary st um, studies and the Ottoman Empire. Anatolian Studies, flag flagship periodical of the BIA, still going strong. I think that the 74th issue is, uh, yes, 74th issue is about to be uh, ready. The academic editors are Nish McSweeney and Anna Kollar, and all of these academics here on the screen and in the committee are also honorary. No publications, of course, without publication editors. And um, here again, we have a switch because Abby Robinson decided that she uh, is no longer going to be the editor for Anatolian Studies and Heritage Turkey. She prefers editing uh, monographs, so she will continue working with the BIA and she will continue working on the BIA monograph series. Instead, Janine Su has started, is taken over, and she will be, um, from now, she used to be a monograph editor, and now she will take on Anatolian studies and uh, heritage Turkey. She is also behind the new design for the BIA monograph, so a fresh coat of paint. So the next, I think that the first one that is going to have the new design, newly designed cover, as well as also insides uh, change, uh, is the one coming up soon. So what do we do to mark the 75th anniversary? Because so far I've only talked about the normal BIA business. 
Rather than one big celebratory event, we opted for events showcasing the work of the BIA throughout the year. And we kicked off with an event on cultural heritage management, more specifically the book launch uh, of the Pisidia Heritage Trail. This uh, heritage trail is um, based on the work of the Psidia survey project and that we are talking here about over 30 years of survey in Psidia where different um, classical sites were surveyed as well as their hinterland, some of their hinterland. You can see the main ones uh, indicated with the red stars. And the trail itself on the right is equally an, uh, a result of several years of work uh, and of building the trail in the area. And the idea, so it links 12 archaeological sites as well as the contemporary rural settlements along the trail. And the idea is to get the local, um, to, to, to create some ecotourism, so a trickle of people walking the trail, no mass, no mass tourism in the Taurus Mountains, but uh, it will generate some income, some additional income for the local communities, which, who we think will then become more, more um, protective of the heritage along the trail. So we think that it's working, so we'll see how it goes. Then there was the fun part. Uh, no, this is first not so much the fun part, it was also nice, but, 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 but. So this is the evening itself, uh, which was a, a kind of, um, which was a panel um, with uh, Ishla Gursu, who wrote a book, um, Umit Ishin, who is the uh, owner of Ikenux Travel and who basically walked the trail and designed the trail with us. Uh, um, Michele Massa, who was um, responsible for the GPS and uh, GIS uh, behind the whole trail, and then myself, because I'm one of the people who has been working in Pisidia uh, in the, on the archaeology for many years. So now the fun part is that we also walk the trail, part of the trail twice, together with Equinox. Uh, you can see once in May and one in, once in October. And as you can see, it's very, very beautiful. I also have an example of the book here. So if you would like to have a look, please feel free to do so. The BIA invested heavily in cultural heritage management for more than for 10 years, slightly over 10 years now. And it's certainly one of the um, uh, points of focus that we want to continue in the future. Um, in the first year, the BIA formed the ideal link between the UK, which was one of the forerunners uh, uh, in, on heritage management, with Turkey, where it was very new. But now it is really a growing and vibrant field in Turkey. But uh, I am proud to say that the uh, expertise of the BIA is certainly recognized. One of the main <coughs> uh, uh, projects that we did was SARAT, Safeguarding Archaeological Assets of Turkey. I think that most of you will have heard about that. But before we could do the final, the closure meeting with all different stakeholders as well as international speakers, uh, COVID interfered, so that's why we postponed it. And now this was actually a quite a nice uh, event to have as part of the celebrations this year. Um, so this was looking back at major achievements, but <coughs> sorry. We are still going strong, I think. And at the moment, our um, cultural, Ushilai Gursu is our uh, assistant director for cultural heritage management. I'm sorry. <coughs> okay. But she is at the moment a holder of a British Academy mid career fellowship, which is quite an achievement. And uh, together with her research assistant, Özlem Bajdoğan, she is looking at public understanding of archaeology in Turkey. So which is bringing everything together that we have done. Uh, it's looking at why the archaeological her heritage in Turkey is being eroded at a fast pace that it's happening. 
So we don't only need urgent protective measures, but also a comprehensive uh, investigation of the underlying reasons. And that is, <coughs> sorry, so we need um, effective measures and overarching methodologies need to be developed. Because of the varying socio-economic and um, cultural and political context, this is not going to be an uh, one solution fits all. So therefore, she is looking at different uh, focus groups, the general public, local communities living near the sites, heritage experts, of course, and also individuals with a special relation to, to specific uh, sites. So as you can see, the work was also, uh, was also presented at the British Academy Showcase. <coughs> the the, <coughs> the mid-career fellowship also allowed us to hire a postdoctoral fellow in cultural heritage management who is working on public perceptions in, of Byzantine heritage in Turkey. He is, however, also taking on some of the tasks that Ushalai had as uh, assistant director. So, and many of the <clears throat> of the events that you saw, and these are two of uh, on heritage management that we did throughout the year, were set up through him, uh, by him, but with help of Burju Akshahin, who is our research scholar. She is working uh, two thirds of her time for the BIA and one third for her own education. She is doing, at the moment, a second master's in um, digital humanities in the universe, at the University of York. Um, we are, of course, also looking at uh, new avenues and at new collaborations. And I would like to uh, really uh, go a bit in detail on the collaboration with Newcastle University. Because whereas we did here a workshop, um, Newcastle University is uh, setting up a larger agreement, institutional agreement with the BIA, which will also allow staff to come to the BIA and uh, staff from the BIA to go to the UK, as well as students to come. Uh, so there will be a larger interaction. But this was a beginning, and the workshop here was based on an, uh, uh, living amid the room, so one of the projects of the BIA, on the one hand, and the plural heritage of Istanbul, which was led by Newcastle University. And what is important that both, um, both um, projects were actually built on the idea of community empowerment. We worked here, the workshop took place in Ankara, and we actually also worked with stakeholders from Ankara, which is also newish, because we have been working, <laughs> strange but true, more in Istanbul. Um, and uh, it was important to see how much that there is living in, on, uh, in projects that have the potential of dealing with questions of community co-production. So we, we hope to continue working on these elements. Um, <clears throat> and increased collaboration with UK higher education institution is certainly going to be one uh, focus towards the future. Related uh, is the work that we are doing in uh, the Istanbul Ferikoy Cemetery. So that's the Protestant cemetery in Istanbul. This is a project that is taken on by the BIA um, Assistant Director for uh, Contemporary Turkey and Ottoman Studies. We, and that was Daniel Joseph MacArthur Seal till the end of August. And uh, that position is now taken on by uh, Peter Cherry, who is a uh, comparative literature specialist and who finally made it to Ankara after five months of working on the paperwork. So we are, I, I hear that he's very happy that he finally made it there. So this is important for us because the BIA is uh, part of the advisory board and it's in that advisory board uh, together with several other international research institutes. So uh, the Ferikoy Cemetery is actually cared for by several embassies and the advisory board of research institutes, and I'm talking about the Dutch, the Swedish, the Americans, the German Orient Institute, us, and the uh, Bulgarians are advising the, um, the embassies on what, uh, what could be done in the, 
in the cemetery. It is in use, so there is a community that is linked to the cemetery, which is important. Um, and um, the BIA has been focusing on, on specific topics. The British community, uh, commun uh, British community, and now community, British? British Community Council of Istanbul uh, has funded uh, work on RTI, so that is, which made it possible for us to read the older um, stones of uh, British people that were that are buried there, and um, quite revealing uh, inscriptions there were. And on the other hand, we have also done a survey of the plants in the in the in the cemetery. And what you, you can see the, the team there, they look a bit like rock stars. Uh, but so it's and here again an important element is that they that this is a, a project uh, funded by the BAIA but with uh, several UK um, Turkish universities uh, that were involved. Um, <clears throat> and so this project is actually on bringing together heritage management, contemporary and Ottoman Turkey, and also collections, as I will ref uh, refer to later, which is also what we want to do towards the future. We did also quite a few other uh, um, events on contemporary and Ottoman uh, studies, and a selection that here is an, um, an event, a panel, on the 100th anniversary of the Turkish Republic, and most specifically looking at the foreign policy, which was shared by our president, um, who is also here tonight. Um, <clears throat> and linked to that also equally, uh, the 100th year is, of course, the 100th anniversary, anniversary of the Treaty of Lausanne, um, which resulted in international recognition of the new state's borders and paved the way for the declaration of the Republic uh, just two months, uh, two months later. So, and Professor Jay Winter gave a lecture on the Treaty of Lausanne in the Institute. The Treaty of Lausanne also includes provision for the withdrawal of the British, French, and Italian troops from Istanbul, where they had, been form where they had formed an occupying force for around five years. And our uh, previous uh, assistant director, Daniel, uh, together with one of the BI previous BIA postdoctoral fellows, Gizem Tongo, curated an ex exhibition in Istanbul, which is actually still going, uh, on occupied Istanbul at the Istanbul Research Institute. So document the, documenting the life of the city's residents and occupiers during this unique period. The BIA did and does also continue research in what is considered the traditional areas of the expertise of the BIA, and I think we can say that we are proud to do so. Our current postdoctoral fellow, BIA postdoctoral fellow, uh, Özlem Saratış, Tash, who is unfortunately the only postdoctoral fellow because um, we can no longer afford to have two. So, um, but she is working on legacy material uh, from Jana San, which was an excavation by uh, David French, so one of the previous directors of the BIA, and more specifically on animal bones. So, uh, but it's important that she uses these animal bones to look at domestication and uh, of the, um, in the Neolithic, Neolithic period in the Konya Plain. Um, so she is looking at environmental archaeology, and you may remember that you saw a uh, flotation device uh, when I showed the first uh, grants that we have we gave this year. And what you see there in the corner now is actually the first ever flotation device that was constructed by David French in Jana San, and. Um, Introducing environmental archaeology is certainly one of the of the um, realizations that the BIA can be uh, proud of. But this one is done in the 1960s, 1950s, 1960s. Environmental archaeology is still very important, and um, this kind of research is also linked to the kind of research that we 
equally fund and support, which is looking at um, genomes uh, in animal species, species and which show how the genomes of um, animals was changed throughout the process of domestication. We also, I'm only giving a selection of the events that took place in Ankara over the year, but you can find all of them on the, uh, the BIA website. The same variety in the evening events can also be found in the topics of workshops and conferences that took related uh, to archaeology and related disciplines that took place in the framework of the uh, 75th anniversary. The first one was integrated approaches to, approaches to the political geography of southern Anatolia, uh, which was in collaboration with Bill Kent University. And here again, I would like to highlight that Further collaboration with Turkish universities is certainly something that we want to continue uh, in the coming years. And the aim was to create an interdisciplinary platform to engage with the political geography of southern Anatolia uh, in the, between the mid-2nd and the mid-1st century BCE. The BIA contribution here is extremely strong because the BIA has a long uh, history of supporting scholars that devoted their time and energy to the archaeology and the history of especially southern Anatolia. And the BIA founder, John Carston, himself ex excavated in Mersin. And um, people were asking me, are you going to go year by year? I'm only going to mention that in, 19, uh, in 1959, the BIA published the geography of the Hittite Empire, uh, co-authored by John Garston and Oliver Gurney, which is still seen as the first attempt of a political geography of Hittite Asia Minor. So we have quite a bit to offer there. There is also continued uh, interest and support, support of the BIRA of archaeology and history of um, southern Anatolia and involvement of a uh, study of uh, Hittite uh, cuneiform, Luvian hieroglyphic, and the discipline of um, uh, political geography as a whole. A completely different um, event was then uh, an event um, devoted to the 750th anniversary of the death of the poet and religious scholar Jalal al-Din Rumi, known in Turkish as Mevlama. It, was, uh, it took place in July in Ankara in the Institute, and it was one of the few uh, in-person only events that took place this year, because we tried to make a point of having everything hybrid, so that not only the people in the room, but the whole world can um, uh, take part if they wish so. What is important, though, is that it was a collaboration between the BIA and the British Institute for Persian Studies, which is one of the sister institutions of the BIA, is another one of the BIRI, of the British International Research Institutes. Once again, in red, so that means that it's one of the things that we would like to continue looking into uh, and certainly um, developing over the next years. Upcoming is probably what is the, the biggest uh, conference that we did this year, is contextualizing the Neolithic. Once again, a collaboration with Bill Kent University. Uh, the program, in case you are um, interested, is available on the BIA website. This one will be hybrid, uh, so you can also uh, take part from the UK if you would like to. And here again, I think that you, you heard me mention the Konya Plain several times already. I think it is a very long-standing tradition of over 60 years that the BIA has been uh, involved in projects, British projects, uh, working on the Konya Plain. You can see working down, for, I mean, starting with um, James Mallard, and at the moment there is uh, Douglas Baird is working there, as well as uh, Michele Massa and Christophe Backhuber are starting a new, um, a new project. 
And you can read more about the BIA in the Konya Plain in uh, an issue of World Archaeology, and that is uh, current World Archaeology, and that is actually one of two issues that is, uh, has papers devoted uh, to the BIA in current world archaeology, so which is important to, uh, for outreach towards the, the more general public. And the other issue has, um, <coughs> has a long, long article on uh, water management in Istanbul. So the Konya Plain, and what is important is that the British project, so BIA supported, allowed researchers working on DIA, DNA, archaeobotany, archaeozoology, isotope analysis, to basically work um, um, overarching, so with results and material from different projects. And it has turned out that this, that this is really important because that means that you can also get overarching results which are much more important than for one individual site only. We also continued with other projects and uh, what is important with this project is that it has archaeology at its core but that it's based on uh, collaboration between humanities and social sciences and uh, scientists from, the, from STEM. Uh, disciplines. As you can see, it was once again a collaboration between, I mean, the BIA, but also but, um, universities from the UK and from Turkey. And what we try to do with this project is that, uh, on the one hand, there was continued research on the area around Topkapı to find out more about past practices in water management, uh, because although we know very point-wise quite a lot about the water management, we don't really, still don't know how everything functioned, functioned together. The engineers then uh, modeled how much water was actually brought to, to Topkapı. But then the social scientists involved in this, uh, in this project brought together contemporary uh, stakeholders uh, and water management experts working on and in Istanbul. So, we presented then what our results were from past practices. And um, <clears throat> that inspired lively um, uh, discussions among contemporary Turkey and contemporary Istanbul experts on rainwater storage. Because at the moment, all the rainwater flows in the Bosphorus, nothing is uh, retained, and Istanbul can no longer um, afford that. We, they need um, to somehow to, uh, to catch the rainwater. So, and through several workshops with a participatory knowledge generation, the, uh, rain, the contemporary stakeholders um, developed strategies on how that could be, do, uh, be, be done. And that is, of course, extremely important when we look at uh, the impact of climate change also on rainwater and on water uh, in Istanbul in, uh, in its totality. And I, uh, we can also say that the workshops actually resulted in changing some of the regulations on rainwater uh, management in Istanbul, which is uh, rather uh, important impact. In March 2023, as you can see here, we held a one-day hybrid conference, that, uh, we, both in Turkish and in English, to present the results uh, of our project. And I'm saying our project because, of course, Jim uh, was uh, imp very important um, in the project. And we, uh, we invited other people working on Istanbul to also put our result in the context. Now, based on the uh, results of water in Istanbul and on uh, the request from district municipalities in, Istanbul, in Kadıköy in Istanbul, we uh, are continuing our work on rainwater, rainwater harvesting. And this time, uh, the project is funded by the international project uh, funding from the British Embassy. Uh, and it was uh, Ender Peker and Akkun Ilhan are the ones that are taking it forward, but Martin Wietz was uh, instrumental at getting the application together. 
<laughs> so and what we are doing now is basically a, a training program for municipalities with Kadukeri as a case study. And the idea is that there will be an online toolkit, toolkit for municipalities in Turkey, Turkey. Uh, it's also in Turkish, of course, uh, to do something about how to go about rainwater for harvesting. The first big event took place on the 7th and the 8th of November, and as you can hopefully see, there were more than 100 people in the room and 250 people online. So there is a really important, um, I mean, this is a really important uh, topic which really uh, generates a lot of interest. The second day was done actually hands-on, uh, where uh, in Kadukeu, uh, the, the people were actually looking at where a case study should start, and there was lively discussion because every, all, each of the different groups wanted their proposal to go through. But uh, so now um, one of the, I mean, they managed to uh, agree on something, and we are now going to start developing uh, that case study for rainwater um, harvesting. Um, doing water management also had a bit of a surprising, uh, no, a surprising event, but uh, before I'm going to the surprising event, the next one uh, is upcoming already, and um, that is an event in, again, in Turkish with uh, um, experts on um, uh, water management in Istanbul, and it is in the framework of uh, COP28. So that is on the 8th of uh, December. And after the, the, the panel discussion, there is the option of people to go and visit uh, a having a guided tour of Yerebatan Saraya, so the newly uh, restored um, uh, basilica cistern, with an expert. Um, and that expert was also there when we presented the uh, past water management um, infrastructure to the Duke of Edinburgh in September 2023, uh, and we, you can see us here together with uh, the Duke and also people from uh, Istanbul um, municipality. Uh, furthermore, and this is the last one on water management, uh, the institute is also involved in a rural area, more specifically the Konya Plain, and um, we held a an, um, an, um, project information sharing meeting at the BIA in August uh, when climate change was very, very clear because it was incredibly hot. So, um, and what this project is trying to do, uh, as most of you will know, Konya is one of the, drain, uh, the areas with the least rainfall in Turkey and is therefore extremely vulnerable to drought and which will increase uh, towards the future also because of climate change. So unsustainable irrigation techniques and wrong crop choices uh, make the water resources um, and agricultural production as, as well as food security increase, increasingly fragile. This while actually the Konya Plain has throughout history uh, been an area where uh, agriculture was important, and uh, archaeological remains as well, in combination with Ottoman archives, provide an opportunity to understand how water can be used sustainable. Whether it's going to be possible to convince contemporary farmers to um, change the way they, uh, they go about their agriculture is another uh, question, of course. But uh, to give you a bit of illustration on the uh, top left is uh, what was once a large lake, Hotamush Lake, which is now completely dry. And on the right-hand side, you can see an um, infrastructure that was uh, from the beginning, earlier 20th century, which is now also completely obsolete because it's also, so desertification in the Konya Plain is, 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 is very worrying. So we'll see uh, whether sustainable water management can be reintroduced so on the 10th of August, we had discussions with national, uh, regional, and local authorities on the situation. 
What we are currently doing on water management is that we are preparing, preparing for the first ever uh, sustainable water management conference that is co-organized by all eight of the British International Research Institutes. I can't show you the poster yet because we still have to make it, but the program is ready and uh, it will soon be available on all the BIRI's websites. So, and it's going to take place here in the Academy in March to 2024. Um, now, all of the projects that I mentioned are, of course, in interaction with uh, collections uh, at the BIA. I haven't mentioned uh, them very often yet, but one of the um, important events that took place is the launch of the digital repository in March 2023. And whereas this is relatively new of us, the launch is actually also a culmination of five years of work because they started working on this in uh, 2018. Um, there is still a lot of work to do, but you can look at our website and you will see that there are already uh, 21 collections ingested. And you can also see the team. Uh, Nurdan Atalan Chayres Mes is the manager and Gonja is her assistant. There is still a lot to be done, but uh, I think that there is a good start that has been made. We also had, uh, the, the team is really uh, deeply involved in rather, in, in several uh, international uh, work groups on digital humanities. And that's also reflected in the workshops that we did uh, throughout this year. The first one was uh, set up by the team of Imagining Futures. And Imagining Futures is a big HRC, UKRI funded uh, projects um, led by the University of Exeter, and they are working on connecting archives and connecting people. And as you can see, uh, the topic in Ankara was context of displacement and post-conflict. It's also January, uh, February 23, so there was uh, a whole panel uh, dedicated also to the earthquakes. What is important here is also, of course, the Turkish community. And on the right-hand side, you see uh, um, the poster of a uh, workshop in, uh, that was completely in Turkish. And that is based on a project that uh, the British Institute is doing with the one, another one of our sister institutions, namely the, uh, the Institute for Libyan and North African Studies. Uh, as well as a Wikimedia community user group in Turkey. And we, the aim was to widen access to archives by focusing on the concept of creators. And once uh, all of this is completed, it will be very important for all the um, practice on, uh, uh, for recommendations of best practices for uh, linking person data in the GLAM institutions. Um, we also hosted a uh, digitization project uh, uh, workshop of the British Institute's uh, uh, digitization project because we are all working together, all eight of us, on uh, creating digital repositories for each of the, of the um, uh, BIRI and then a portal that makes it, will make it possible to access the repositories from each of the individual um, um, institutes from one portal so that we can, people can do research that is uh, spanning several institutions. So it's research driven, but at the moment it's very much hard work uh, because everybody is at a different level. But there we are, we are working on it and I'm sure that it will get better. I'm very glad to be able to um, report here as well that we also have some new funding, which is always great. Uh, from the Modern Endangered Archives program, so the Arcadia Trust, so that we can work on the lost villages of the upper, upper Euphrates. And what we, it will, this project will allow us to digitize uh, around 2,500 uh, slides. And slides are very time sensitive. So after a while, they become just red. Everything goes, red remains. And this is important because it's uh, focusing on ethnographical slides from the areas that are now under, under, the, wat under uh, the waters of uh, several of the hydraulic dams in Turkey. So it's not just preserving, it's also uh, um, recovering of ethnographic information. 
Uh, this is also part of a larger project. We hope that we are going to be able to do a lot more with all the information that we have on the Euphrates uh, Valley. BIA collections is not only the digital collections, but also the physical collections, which are, and they are curated by Buchak Delikan and her uh, assistant Nihal Uzum. And this year, we decided to also um, really focus a bit more again on the physical collections. And what we started to do was um, restorations of some of the books in the libraries. As you can see, they needed it very badly. Um, um, bookworms, uh, disintegrated, uh, disintegrating uh, covers, badly restored uh, covers. And so we start to slowly, slowly get them back. As you can see on the photograph below, uh, digital humanities and actual physical collections are really intrinsically linked because we have the, uh, the cataloging of the physical collections which are then digitized and the metadata are, um, are generated. So the two teams work together very closely. We are also in the process of um, looking at building a wall through, um, through the, I mean, in our lab, so that we will have two units and one will be completely climate controlled for all the botanical collections. Uh, whereas in the not so much climate contro controlled area, people can then work <laughs> without freezing. And uh, that's also where the animal bonds will be stored. We are going to finish, finalize that before the end of the, of the year. What is also important is in the collections is that the Institute supports interns from several UK, uh, Ankara universities. So they come for uh, several months to us and then get an introduction to the physical collection as well as uh, the digitization, which uh, in a way makes it, uh, makes it a little community where everybody really works uh, nicely, if I can say so, uh, together. Um, we, of course, could not do everything that we are doing without the good care of our caretaker and our housekeeper, as well as somebody else that I, uh, that I can't forget, our cat Sparrow, who still allows us all to work in, our, in her house. <laughs> But she doesn't like it when we come for the weekend because then she needs her days off. So just to uh, come back to everything that I put in red. So these are the, the, high, the, the points of focus, I think, that we want to work on. Um, institutional uh, collaboration with UK higher education institutions, further collaboration with international research institutions, but also equally important, uh, further collaboration and increased collaboration with Turkish and local higher education institutions so that the institute ideally will be a hub where the UK and the local universities can come together. I mentioned several collaborations with our sister institutions from the BIRI, and we would really like to increase that. And I'm very glad that one of my uh, colleague directors is also in the audience, because I think uh, the BIRI have um, a good option of a good future together. Um, we do want to continue working on cultural, cultural heritage management, where the Institute has really made a difference over the last years, and we intend to continue doing so. We also want to continue flying the flag of cutting edge uh, archaeology and related disciplines research. The Ferico Cemetery that I mentioned really offered a good example, I think, of intersection of contemporary and Ottoman Turkey research together with cultural heritage management and collections. And it looks as if we are going more and more into that direction where heritage management, climate change, sustainable water management, actually are all different topics that work together very well and where uh, we think that there is a lot of work that needs to be done and where um, an institute focusing on humanities and social science can actually also make a difference. Um, we, of course, intend to continue as a research institution that uh, grants research grants and fellowships our BIA collections are important historical collections that need content, uh, continued um, 
uh, attention and we hope to continue increasing them and also the digital repository is still the only digital regional repository so that too we want to continue. We want to continue our events and we would like to try con to continue doing them hybrid so that not just the people in the room but everybody uh, who wants to from all over the world can tune in. And if anybody has an idea for new funding, you are very welcome. So thank you very much for listening to me. If there are any questions, I will be happy to answer, try and answer them. <laughs>